Hi guys, so today this will be our choice of wine. It's called Just a Juice. It's an Italian 2021 wine. Um, so yeah, we'll let you know by the end of the show how it tastes. Grab a drink. Grab a drink. Ah. Don't you just love opening a bottle of wine? I just love wine. That... I prefer red though, so it's going to be really unique to taste the white. Yeah, we need to open our palettes, girl. 100%. Um, and our wine course will definitely do that as well. <laughs> so I'm excited. Thank you. There we go. I always wonder, is it an even pour? It doesn't matter because I don't really like white wine that much. <laughs> no, no, so. top of yours. <laughs> we, get, we get you talking. It's fine. <laughs> right. So can you introduce our topic for today, please? Absolutely. So today our topic essentially, one of my favorite topics, by the way. Um, <laughs> but our topic is, does the woman earning more automatically equal disrespect to her partner? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes. What do you think? What is your first so, initial thoughts on that? The actual answer for me is no. Mm -hmm. However, I do see the disrespect where the disrespect comes in, mm -hmm. but it, I don't think it's necessarily to do with the fact the woman earns more. Fine. I think it's to do with other aspects of it. Okay. But obviously, we'll touch on that throughout our conversation. Um, but automatic answer: the answer is actually no. But it's mm -hmm. everything else that surrounds it. Um, what do you think? I feel like this topic is a very interesting one because I think there are so many things that play into it. But to answer your question, I I kind of agree with you. I don't necessarily feel like it equals disrespect. I think it depends on what the dynamics of the relationship is um, okay. with the with the with your partner. Yeah. Um. There are some people who just typically, you know, they they find a dynamic that works for their household and their family. And if it is that the woman is earning more, then mm does that really equal disrespect? I think there's so many aspects to look at it from because I don't think it's it's always about the money. So mm -hmm. obviously finance is definitely one of the highest causes of um, divorce in the UK and in the US. It's, I think it's top three for both. Yeah. But I think it's everything else that surrounds it, you know. And when I say that, I think a lot of the time, how much money we're kind of earning depends on the kind of role and the kind of job that we do. Yeah. Um, And that again, moving up, and doing things and branching out and having a side hustle. I think that's where the, the disrespect comes in. Yeah. I feel like a lot of women um, do a lot. Yeah. So for example, we can't be, let's say we go to work, we're bringing in money the same way the man is nowadays in the household. Mm -hmm. um, but then we're coming home and we're cooking. We're coming home and we're cleaning. Mm -hmm. On the weekends, we're running all the errands for the house. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? Um, you know, we're still trying to work on ourselves. We're still trying to work on our bodies. There's yeah. so many things. And I feel like we carry a really heavy, heavy workload yeah um and also dating a man that's not financially secure in himself even when you hear about it and when women talk about it mm. it's the way them in which the man treats them mm -hmm. i think that causes a lot of disrespect as well not yeah. necessarily the facts you know what i mean it's an insecure insecurity on his end mm. and sometimes they make a lot of jokes along the line that like, we're going to be spending your money we're going to be doing this with your money or mm. she thinks she's the you see what i mean so i don't necessarily think it equals disrespect from the woman's end I think there's many things that that surround that that seems like it's disrespectful. Okay. Do you feel like it affects different um, cultures in different ways? So do you feel like, you know, if you're in the Asian culture, if you're in a um, white culture or Caucasian culture versus if you're in a black culture, it would impact, you know, it will affect, you know, or dent the man's ego in a different way? Yeah, I definitely think so. And I think that because we're all raised differently. Yeah. Um, and even in cultural, there's mm -hmm. still cultural differences within the culture. So 100%, for example, it might be different for a Ghanaian and a Nigerian. Yeah. It might be different inside the Nigerian culture in versus Yoruba versus Ibo. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? And I think depending on the way the man also views money and the woman also views money. Yeah. And what they saw growing up and what they saw in their household and how they currently hold themselves like financially, mm -hmm. I think it's very different. Yeah. 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 Um, what do I you agree. think? I, th I do feel like it really does depend on quite a few factors. And I feel like culture is one. I yeah. feel like there are some c cultures where the man is expected to go out and be the hunter, be the, yeah. you know, be and the provider. I absolutely believe that. So, you mm -hmm. know, there are some, you know, aspects where, you know, the man is meant to be the provider. And so yeah. anything less than, it may not even necessarily be the woman that's effect um, that cares about... Yeah. Whether or not the man's bringing in money, it may actually be the families. It may be the community. They may turn around and be like, how, like, why, how can you allow your, you know, the woman to work, you know? Mm. And, and, and that could spark, 
you know, the disrespect from the community of the community not trusting a man to look after his household and being a provider and being, you know, the breadwinner for the family. Um, but interestingly enough, I remember talking to my cousin, Yomi, he's amazing. Shout out Yomi. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, we were talking about like, you know, back in the day, especially um, in Nigeria, our grandmother, so yeah. um, my oh, maternal yeah. grandmother was the... Um, was the, was the breadwinner for the family um you know my pater- my maternal grandfather was very um this is actually nice is that nice yeah it actually is. okay i can't wait to take my first sip mm-hmm. <laughs> um but my maternal grandfather was very affluent you know he he had a lot of money he was doing very well okay. um and my on my mum's side of the family they were actually um Born Muslim, so like my grandfather was Muslim, my yep. grandmother was Muslim, and my mum and her siblings were born into Islam. And you know, my grandfather he did have multiple wives. Um, because uh, you know it was a thing that you could do in Nigeria, and, it's, and I believe it's still something that you know can be done. Yeah. Um, and the idea around it is providing you can provide, and providing you can you know look after your your many wives. Yeah. Then it's, I believe- it's known as being accepted. Yeah. Um, but you know, my grandmother was also very much a a hustler and a worker, a hard worker. And she'd go out and she would, you know, do business in Benin and you know in the north of Nigeria. And you know, like she was always traveling and out hustling. And you see it a lot in in um the the Nigerian culture. You see a lot of the women going to the market, yeah. the women with the babies on their backs, like, you know, there's no such thing as maternity leave. Yeah. And so a lot of them were going out and working and hustling and trying to, you know, still make money to bring home to the family. And when they'd get home, they would say, you know, this is what I've brought in brought into the house. This is what I've produced for the family. Yeah. So two things I want to touch on, on what you said. So I think the first thing is obviously within the Islamic culture, you can obviously have multiple wives, mm. but you have to treat those wives the same. Yeah. So if you provide one thing for one wife, you're supposed yeah. to provide that for all of your wives. Of course. Um. So if you're the provider for the family for one and you give, you know, your the rent to one person, mm-hmm. whatever it is, you need to provide that rent to the second person, to no, the second wife, to the third wife, to the fourth wife. Yeah. Um. So that's, that's the first thing. And in regards to like the woman being the hustler, I see that a lot in Nigerian culture yeah, um, and that it happens all the time. Yeah. And this is what I'm saying in regards to, I don't think it's the finance that necessarily equals the disrespect. I think mm-hmm. it's everything else. Yeah. Because what we see is the woman going out to do stuff and then mm-hmm. the daughters are raised to see the mum, the daughters see this what the mum does. This is delicious by the way guys. This, this <laughs> honestly, is I don't even like white wine like that, but <laughs> this is good. Um, so yeah, you see the, the, the daughters then see their mums doing a lot of the work and it's very, very common in African culture. But I think, what it is in terms of does it automatically equal disrespect? It doesn't. What I think equals disrespect is when the man is not pulling his weight, mm. when the man doesn't seem to be consistent, mm-hmm. uh, when the man doesn't seem to have discipline. Mm-hmm. Those are the kind of things that I think is what equals disrespect. Because if I'm getting up every morning and I'm going to work and you're lying down in the bed in the morning when I leave and I come back, you haven't even showered and you're still lying down in the bed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or you haven't done any of the cleaning in the house. You haven't done anything. Yeah. I'm automatically going to assume mm. that, and not even that, what that does, again, fem- feminine and masculine energy, That what that does is it puts the woman on defense yeah. and it puts her in her masculine energy, the masculine role. So she's making decisions and having to do things that you should be doing potentially. Yeah. Um, obviously, depending on the dynamic of your relationship and um, what you guys decide for your relationship. But mm-hmm. I think that's what brings in or what breeds the disrespect. And also I think where, depending on the culture, where the man wants to be the provider or yeah. thinks he's the provider, it's very difficult to have a say when you're not pulling your weight or when you're not doing as much because yeah. it just breeds resentment. Okay. And I think that's what causes the disrespect. So it's not necessarily finance mm-hmm. in terms of I earn more than you because again, you can be in the same tax bracket and it's fine. Mm-hmm. You won't even notice the difference really. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. But it's everything else that surrounds it. How are you financially making decisions? How are you consistent with those habits? How are you disciplined with those habits? Yeah. Because most of the time we are where we are because of how we see ourselves and, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. I was just going to say, I think it would be quite good to try to elaborate on when you say it's everything else that surrounds it and whether yeah. or not the guy's pulling his weight. Yeah. What 
does that look like to you? So, for example, if you were, if you put yourself in a position of earning more than a guy, yeah. what kind of things would you expect the guy to be doing in order for you to still give him the respect? I think it's interesting. So, again, it, I feel like if we're, it depends on what tax bracket we're in. Let's say, because if you're in the same tax bracket, I think it doesn't matter. You mm-hmm. see what I mean? So, for example, um, if you're but one's earning 55k and one's earning 50k, for example, I don't think that difference really matters mm-hmm. because your lifestyles are still quite similar. Fine. But if one of you's earning 120k and then one of you's earning 50k, for example, your tax brackets are quite are very different, mm-hmm. and your lifestyles are also going to be very different. If that makes sense. But for me, in order to for me to respect my particular partner or my man as you know or my future husband, again, it's the habit. So you are where you are, as I said, based on how you see yourself and what you want to mm-hmm. do. So it's going to be: Are you looking to do better for yourself? Yeah. Do you have a side hustle? for example, or are you trying to do something on the side, build a business, do a passion that you enjoy, something that you enjoy, of course, because I feel mm-hmm. like everything needs to be enjoyed. Yeah. Are you, um, for example, because um, again, it goes back to what we talked about in other episodes and, and different things, but disciplined, mm-hmm. because if you're disciplined and you're working towards those goals and working in the 12 week years, we say, um, you'll be, you'll be meeting me where I am at some point. Mm-hmm. And that's what, that's the difference between earning and earning potential. So for mm-hmm. example, I can be earning, dating somebody that earns 5K less than me, but his earning potential might be a lot higher than mine, depending on what job role he does. Yeah. So that will definitely be one thing. Mm -hmm. But then earning potential, Mm. you have to meet that potential at some point. Yeah. Again, but in order to meet those, that, that you have to be disciplined. You have to be consistent. Mm -hmm. You have to work in the days. You have to know where it is you're going. But are you just, for example, how do I explain? Are you just talking and not doing? But then what happens if, you know, there are some scenarios where I've heard about a guy, for example, he was doing really, really well. Yeah. And he had, you know, he was earning more than his Missy. counterpart at the time. Yeah. And, you know, they were getting married and then yeah. he loses his job. You know, especially yeah. with the pandemic and all that's happened yeah. around this time, you know, like job security is a massive issue and it is a massive topic at the moment. Yeah. And so he lost his job and then, you know, she had to basically pull and help and, you know, really make ends meet. Yeah. And during the time he lost his job, he ended up working at Tesco. Yeah. Because that was a job that he could, at a time, acquire. And that's fine. But then, you know, it ended up having a real impact on them. Okay, so that's that's a good point. And I feel like, at the end of the day, when you're with somebody, it's your role to support them. And we go through things in life, whether that's, mm. for example, going to the ho- going through illness, yeah, losing your job because, mm. like you said, the pandemic, the recession, loads of people lost their jobs. And people, my thing with that though is again, it's consistency, it's forward thinking, and it's habits. Mm. Because him working in Tesco to me is a good thing because it shows me that you will do whatever it takes for our family mm-hmm. if anything goes wrong. Oh, just and disclaimer: it, there's nothing wrong with working in Tesco, guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, it shows me you will do whatever it is for our family. So wherever, wherever you're working, yeah. does that make sense? And that's what, those are the, the habits that I want to see as a woman mm-hmm. in my husband. Because at the end of the day, at some point, you're going to pick yourself back up and potentially go back to the job that you was at. But then what about if he doesn't? What about if he gets very complacent and comfortable where he's and at? And that's what I'm saying and... about it's not necessarily how much money they're earning. Mm. It's the habits and how they see themselves and what they think about. Because mm. if you was earning a lot more before... And our family was doing really well before and we were kind of, you know, enjoying life and doing things together. Mm-hmm. Me having to pick things up is absolutely fine because I feel like at the end of the day in relationships, somebody, in we're going to be, we're not always going to be 100%. Yeah. Sometimes I'm going to be at 40% and I'm going to need you to be at 60. And mm-hmm. I'm, to, do you know what I mean? Or I'm going to need you to be at 100. And sometimes you're going to be at 40% and I'm going to need to be at 100 to do that for you. Mm-hmm. But if you're staying stagnant and you're staying complacent, mm-hmm. that shows me something about your character. Do you see what but I mean? then is that a problem? I'm just playing at devil's advocate. Yeah. Here. Is that a problem? If you find a man who, you know, went from a hundred K job yeah. where he's, you know, earning, you know, a significant amount and he's doing very well. And mm. maybe at the time you were on 50 K, yeah. but then you've now, you know, progressed and now maybe you're at a hundred K, but then your husband has lost his job and he's, you know, now earning 50, 60 K, mm-hmm. but he's happy. Yeah. And he's not stressed and mm-hmm. therefore he's not bringing stress into the home. Mm-hmm. And he's, you know, able to maybe get home from work a bit quicker than you. And so mm-hmm. is able to maybe start dinner. Like, uh, is that something that you like, you know, is that is that um, a, a reasonable trade off? It depends, I think, at the time and where we're at in our relationship. And um, 
how it affects the household financially because financial disputes are a really big thing in relationships. Mm. So, you know, it's one thing for you to be happy, but am I happy? Mm. Do you see what I mean? And as a, when, if we're married, we both need to be happy. I want you to be happy. I want you to be at your full potential. Mm -hmm. um, and when we first started dating, you if I see that, you know, you just, because people get comfortable because not yeah. because they, because of fear most of the time, mm -hmm. not necessarily because of, I don't think I could do better because you might do a completely different job and still be earning a hundred K that you were earning before. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? So yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting one. The dynamic, the, the dynamic is interesting. And I was watching something the other day and basically the woman said, um, naturally women were apparently built to always want the, not the taller, the stronger, the protector, the provider. When you see your man and you don't see him in that light. Yeah. What do you think happens? Well, it triggers the the masculine energy in a woman. And then what happens from then on? <laughs> well, I mean, each woman's going to like, you know, break it down in a different way. But yeah. and I think it depends on the circumstances. But I, I think generically speaking, yeah. it probably would, you know, make you want like, you know, not have as much respect for your partner. And that's why I said it's not necessarily the finances. Yeah. It's everything else that surrounds, surrounds it. it. Yeah. Because you're you've become so comfortable in your position. Mm -hmm. And like you said, there's absolutely nothing wrong with working anywhere. But the thing is you could be working in Tesco headquarters. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? And you can still love your job. Yeah. You could no, be working, you can own a cleaning company and still love your job. Mm. Some people are the managers of food shops and still love their jobs. You see what I mean? I love my job. Mm -hmm. Um and I'm not I'm not a manager. You're a manager. Mm -hmm. You like your job. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And it just really depends on on, I think where that person is at and if they're complacent or not I think being complacent and being very comfortable in life is what tends to breed the disrespect because it's like we've always mm. got to be aiming to do better yeah we always want and when you're happy that's I want you to be happy mm. in whatever job it is that you're doing but you also have to want me to be happy yeah and we need to be happy together yeah in our household and think about our kids for example in the future yeah. I think for me it's more about just making sure I think like I've spoken to my mom quite a bit about, you yeah. know, what makes a happy marriage and what makes a successful marriage. Yeah. I do come from a, you know, uh, two divorced parents. But ultimately for me, it's very important that from having conversations with my mom, I think having a man who is happy yes. with where he's at in life. And yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean he has to be earning millions a year because Absolutely. millions could, you know, it can in, it can bring about stress, which brings yep. stress into the household. Yep. Um, but marrying somebody who loves you, cherishes you, yeah. you know, respects you mm -hmm. is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes, you know, finances, as you mentioned before, is one of the highest of, um, reasons for divorce. Yeah. And I think if you, if there is such a focus on the finances, sometimes, you know, you can miss out the other qualities in a person. So for example, they may not be the, you know, they may not be earning the most yeah. in the house between the pair of you, but maybe they're the best dad. And those are things that you can't buy. I those are things agree. that you can't, you know, trade off with money necessarily, yeah. you know. And so providing, I think for me personally, providing he's in a job that's enough for our household, enough yeah. to support, you know, what we're doing, what we've yes. got going, you know, paying for the bills and stuff like that, yeah. then, you know, I'm... I, I can kind of understand. I think, you know, they say you have to leave, live within your means. And, and I think that's, that's a very important thing 100%. because, you know, I think a child's happiness, and yeah. I'm, I'm assuming this is a family here because yeah, same. ultimately if it's just me and my partner, then it's, it's just me and my partner. Yeah. But I think when you're looking at it from a, from a total picture of having kids as well, yeah. that's when the dynamics change and finances becomes an even bigger conversation because obviously what you're bringing in does impact the, the children. Yeah. Um. So providing, you know, the, f the family is taken care of and, you know, there's still that covering. We're still able to pay for our bills, still be able to provide a roof over our head and not think about money every month. Yeah. Then I'd be willing to part with, you know, being the higher earner. The only thing is, mm -hmm. which contradicts my statement slightly, is that, you know, I do also, my concerns really stem from the point in which a woman, and this could be a whole nother topic, but, you know, when a woman needs to go out, um, needs to be, if, she, if she's earning more, yeah. sorry, waffling there, guys. If a woman is earning more and she needs to go on maternity leave, mm -hmm. how does that then change the dynamics in the house? And exactly. 
And that's why, I'm, but that's why I say it's not, for example, what you said, but just touch on what you said previously. Mm. I think it's really important that we highlight that because I think it's, it's, again, it's crucial. This is what I'm saying. It's not necessarily the finances because what you touched on is him being happy, mm. him being an amazing dad, but you're not struggling for money. Mm. Do you see what I mean? And yeah. that's the key thing. But again, you've touched on things that are not money related. The yeah. fact that he's a good dad. So it's the aspects that surround yeah. it because you respect him mm -hmm. because he's a loving dad. Yeah. He's a loving husband. He's a loving man. He get at the end of the day, you're still meeting your bills. You're not struggling. Mm -hmm. I think that I think it really does change. Mm -hmm. And the thing with marriage and relationships is love is not enough. Yeah. In our economy, love is not enough. And we hear it in lots of different, in, in, we hear it in everything. And they couldn't go, love is not enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And what's the other one? What's love got to do? Because yeah. at the end of the day, you can love somebody. And honest to God, if your finances are so poor and you're struggling every month and you're seeing that, you know, you don't think he's pulling his weight. He's not mm. even being a good dad, for example. Or maybe he's being a good dad. And the difference again is somebody can be a good dad and a terrible husband. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, see what I mean? Good. And a terrible husband. Yeah. So again, it ha they have the person has to be well-rounded. Yeah. There's reasons why people sing about love not being enough because you will go into a relationship loving somebody mm -hmm. and by the end of it, you will get a divorce. Because, <laughs> and why, there's a reason why finance is the top three. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we can, we can, we can sit here and we can say all these great things about it's true. I agree. Mm -hmm. um, I want your my man to be happy. Mm -hmm. I want my husband, you know what I mean, to be a great husband, a great dad. I want him to be financially stable so that we can obviously manage our household well enough. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's other aspects of the relationship that need to work. And unfortunately, finance is a really big thing because I don't want to be worrying about a roof over my head every month. <laughs> I, don't I don't think anyone does. But I think like when it comes to finances, mm. you know, and going back to our original topic, is the woman earning more? Does that equal disrespect? I don't think, I don't really feel like that, you know, if you're earning more, that equates to disrespect. I, don't I personally think so just too. don't think so. No, me too. But I at agree. the same time, it, you know, so long as the condition would be, so long as we're not struggling in every month and we could still, you know, have a roof over our head and feed our children and providing you could still do those things. Yeah. And providing, you know, there's other aspects to it, like, you know, you're being a great dad and, mm -hmm. you know, you look after me and you're you're pleasant, then, you know, those I I don't feel like it necessarily has to equate to disrespect. Yeah. I so, completely yeah. agree. Um, one hundred percent. But then it's yeah, it's it's difficult because I wonder if for example, we asked a man that question, if he had to have a different point of view, because yeah. I think they, they also see it in the fact that the women also disrespects them. So I think if we had a man, for example, talking, mm. I wonder what his opinion would be. It'd be quite interesting because I do feel like, especially in the black community, specifically Nigerians, just because I'm around, <laughs> surrounded by so many of them. Um, but I do feel like from what I have seen, and this is just me generalizing, yeah. um, I do feel like a lot of them do feel you know, from an ego perspective, that they do want to earn more than their counterpart. And ego I do feel like perspective. <laughs> and I do feel like if a lot of them found, you know, their partner because sometimes in the dating, when you're dating, you don't I mean, I don't ask my partner how much he earns. If he tells me, then he tells me. But I wouldn't yeah. necessarily ask the question. I think some people, you know But I think you can tell. Not all the time. A lot of the time. I, you might get an idea. Yes, not not, not a specific a, figure. Not, yeah, not yeah. A specific but figure. You're but an idea. You probably get an idea. You're like, yeah. oh, okay, he's driving a nice car. But then I don't believe the that. Thing, though. It's not the car. I was just gonna say yeah. because sometimes I feel like, even though you might be driving a nice car mm -hmm. and you may, you know, be in drip, all of yeah. that could be credit cards. All of yeah. that could be borrowed money. Yeah. That could be borrowed clothes, Should borrowed cars. You? So it doesn't necessarily mean he's making more. So I, I don't necessarily believe the notion in. You can tell because also you, a guy could be earning a hundred k and not have a car. Yeah. Um. You know, be living in a shared accommodation. Yeah. Um. Have um. I don't know. Not wear designer. Like, yeah. And I know a lot of people that are like that. I can so, tell you by his uh, daily habits. Not nothing to do with the car. Nothing because again, mm. like you said, some of them don't have cars. So not example, the materialistic a, aspect. Exactly. Yeah. It's nothing to do with that. It's things like, how does he take care of his body? Does he go mm. to the gym? What time does he wake up every single day? Do you see what I mean? Who's he surrounded by? Who are his friends? His day job is how long, how long does he spend there? Mm. Does it, things like that are what is how you can actually tell. Because the car thing, I'm I've no I know guys who borrow their boys' cars when they're going Should out. Should I on give a date. you a top up? I, I think so. <laughs> guys, this wine is delicious. It's delicious, but do you see what I mean? So yeah. like the car thing, the drip thing for me, it's not even that's not even what I'm looking at. Because mm. for me, again, somebody covered in designer head to toe does not it doesn't necessarily speak anything. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? 
they say the most uh, like su- very successful people they wear the same t-shirts every day. It's got nothing to do with that. Yeah, no, of course. Things that they say, for example, I mean, I remember, I think a couple of months ago, I went to a party and I was talking to this this guy that we, um, we were randomly talking. He was telling me about his relationship with his girlfriend. He was telling me about what he does, and he was telling me that he, in order to buy his current property, he lives at home. Mm-hmm. He's like, I live at home, but I have two properties. You mm-hmm. see what I mean? He's like, also, um, I sold my car because I realized I work in central London. Yeah, you know what I mean. So he does. He's if he's going on dates. He's not, he's not driving around anywhere. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? He's not covered in designer. Yeah. Because the designer money is in his, is in his house. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's like, oh, to be honest, I had to wake up. Um, He's a therapist. Mm-hmm. He's like, I had to, I have to wake up every day Um, and, you know, do, uh, what's it called? My therapy job in the morning. Mm-hmm. And then in the evening, I'm thinking of starting my own side therapy business. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Especially to help a certain community. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, cool. So those are the things I'm listening out for, I'm looking for, as opposed to he's covered in designer. That's great for you. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's absolutely great for you. <laughs> I think like, that's actually quite an interesting point because one of my friends, I'm not going to name him, even though I'm sure he wouldn't mind being name dropped, <laughs> but um, he doesn't drive. Mm. And um, he, but he's one of the most, I could like, kid you not, he is so productive and just very ambitious yeah. and he's such a go-getter like he's doing so well for himself yeah. and you know he's he's his ability his workability is something out of the ordinary yeah but he lives a very very minimalistic life and he um he he mentioned he said to me when he takes girls on dates yeah the first place he usually takes them would be like to a coffee shop so it, okay. he'll take them to central london okay he'll take them to like maybe like a starbucks or just okay. like a, you know just a casual coffee shop just to see their reaction just to see how they behave so he will send them like a, a description of an address yeah He'll meet them at the address and it would be a coffee shop. And if they start doing the whole, what is this? Why are you taking me here? Mm. You know, and start kicking off or getting angry and stuff rather than trying to use that time to get to know him. Yeah. He would be like, yeah, nah, I'm not wasting my money on this girl. So I'll start off with a coffee date. But then if the coffee date goes well. Yeah. He usually has a backup plan and it would usually be to take them to like a nicer, like a restaurant or a bar okay. following the coffee date. Mm-hmm. So he's like, you know, that's his methodology <laughs> of taking girls on dates and okay. how to kind of like broach into it. But he's a guy who's very successful. And so many girls, unfortunately, would probably see the fact that he's taking them to a coffee shop mm-hmm. and overlook that and yeah. then <laughs> and then think that he's not got any earning potential or he's not two doing very well with himself mm-hmm. or he's, you know... And, and yeah, they miss a trick there. So two things there. Yeah. So the first thing is, do you think, so if he was married to somebody, for example, do you think the woman would disrespect him because he's uh, she, because he is earning less, for example? Would a woman disrespect him? Yeah. So you know our topic is, for example, does the woman earning more automatically equal, equal disrespect? So mm-hmm. if, for example, I was earning more than this friend, mm-hmm. do you think I would disrespect him? I'll be honest, with this friend, I don't think you would earn less than him. I, mean, I don't think you would earn more than him. No, but, like, saying, uh, but generally per se, speaking, like yeah. he's... He's so, if he knew you were earning, mm-hmm. just going to throw a random number out then. I'm not saying that she's earning this amount, but say you're earning 40K. Yeah. If he knew you were earning 40K, mm-hmm. he, will not, he will not sleep until he's got to 100K. Okay. He's that kind of person. But so that's, but he's, that's, but did you see that? You see right there what you said? Mm. Cool. So my thing is, do you think if mm-hmm. a woman was dating this man, mm-hmm. do you think she'll disrespect him because he's, she's earning more than him? That's the question. Yes or no? <sighs> Because Maybe. she probably would. But do you uh, think so? But the thing is, it's it's very That's interesting because I don't think she would. Me personally, is, as I, a person, yeah. I wouldn't. Because again, like you said, he wouldn't rest. The daily habits, mm. the consistency, the discipline. Okay. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, that's no, why I that's that. why I ask you. Do yeah. you think me, another woman, earning more than this man, mm. would disrespect him? Why would you? No. Because but then, he's ambitious, he's aiming, he's doing. Yes, but for some women, and this is also just, a, you know, generalizing. Yeah. There are some women who want a guy who is earning more than them or yeah. who is striving for more. And so his work ethic may just not be enough for her. her mm-hmm. His work ethic may, like, if she's got an earning potential of, say, a million and he's only at 100,000. Yeah. Whilst that is good to the average person. Yeah. To her, that mm-hmm. may be too small and that, that that may not be enough so she may look at his daily habits and be like this is just a waste of time because you're not but getting that's to where you're 
and well, well this is the thing that's and relative. so that's but then that's why it's very dependent on the individual and whether or not they find that you know like for a woman that's earning a lot more than him mm-hmm. is how much is a lot more mm-hmm. how much is you know how long is a piece of string is it she's in the millions and he's in the 50s or but is, that's, is she but that's completely the, different you see what i mean those are completely different things because as you said let's use 40k as an example let's say i'm earning 40k right mm-hmm. And he's earning, for example, 35K for now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Am I going to disrespect him when I know, for example, he's working and he's not resting and he's disciplined? One million is very different. Because if I'm earning a million, for example, and my partner is a billionaire, I'm not going to disrespect you. But if again, if I'm a billionaire and you're a millionaire, our lifestyles are two different things. We're in two different tax brackets. So I'm, it's different. Again, it's relative. So if we keep it in mm. the, let's say the 40K uh, mark, let's say, I'm earning 40K. He's earning 35K and his habits are, you know, really, really good. Daily discipline. He's got the good earning potential, all of those things. Mm. Why do I, feel, why would I feel the need to disrespect him? Because realistically, our lifestyles are the same. Mm. When you're comparing a million to 40K, our, the lifestyles are completely different. So she's going to disrespect him because her habits are going to be completely different to his. But some people just want, you know, going back to the to one of the points I made previously, mm. some people just want security. Some people just want love. Yeah. Some people just want you know, their partner to be happy doing what they're doing. And if that is enough, then the money aspect doesn't really fit into it. And there, there was a show I watched, mm. and I'm sure a lot of people watched it as well, <laughs> um, <laughs> Selling Sunset. And you okay. see one of the, I don't, did you watch it? I did. Do you, um, do you remember Romaine and I yeah. the other lady? Yeah, yeah. Um, but in that, in- What is her name actually? I can't remember. I can't remember. Um, I can't remember. Oh, but anyway, yeah. she, <laughs> she, had clearly a higher earning potential. She Way was more. like out of this, like, yeah. you know, she was second in command to Jason almost. Like, yeah. you know, that was his next in line, in line like, yeah. you know, out of all, all the workers there. And I mean, we all saw the kind of commissions that they were earning and they've been doing this job for many years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we know that in the property market, you can make so much money, especially if you're selling and in places like LA, like Beverly Hills and yeah. stuff like that. So we, off the bat, can kind of work out that she was probably had, you know, she was earning a lot more than him. Yeah. Um, but from what it looked like, and I'm not in a relationship, I don't know them personally, you know, I've not received statements from them. <laughs> um, just a disclaimer. But from what it looked like, she married him for love. And at the time, it seemed that love was enough. I don't know if they're still together or they're divorcing. But <laughs> ultimately, okay. it seemed that love was enough. And, and it seemed like, I don't know how much he was earning. And he could have been in the millions potentially. Yeah. But from what it looked like, it didn't look like he was quite near to her pay. pay but did rate. you see how many disputes they had? No, of course. I'm not disputing that. Yeah. And, but, yeah. And the thing is, his ego was slightly bruised a lot of the time. It, in that it show. was. It yeah, was. it was. And mm. she also ruled that relationship. Let's, if we're quite frank, she was, she was calling the shots. But then he would have gone into it knowing that like, you know... Mm-hmm. This is the situation. She's clearly earning a lot more than me. Yeah, and you know, um, you have to be okay with it at some point. And it's interesting because do you think age plays a difference? Because as a woman ages, for example, do you think what she what she goes for changes? And that's a different topic in itself. Goes for in terms of what she's looking for in a man, or both? Yeah, what she's looking for in a man, what she's willing to compromise on now. Because mm-hmm. what you're willing to compromise on when you're 21 is very different to what you're willing to compromise <laughs> on when you're 45. Of course. I it's, think, yeah, I think being, when you're younger, the type of things you look for in a guy is very different to, you know, the things you look for as you get older. Yeah. And I feel like throughout the years, it it, it, ve- it will always vary. Throughout like certain periods of your life, it will vary. Like maybe when you're a lot older and you've got kids that have grown up and, mm-hmm. you, know, you, you know, you've got your house and you're quite settled, maybe your focus is is more on like a guy who you can just love. Like you don't need to share finances or anything like that because you've already got yourself set up versus, you know, maybe somebody who is in their early twenties who maybe just wants a bit of fun and just wants to, you know, travel and do all different things. And so what she's looking for in a man will, will differ. And then maybe when you're in that kind of middle age bracket, you know, you're looking to settle down, you're looking for marriage, you're looking for somebody to be a father to your kids you know, the kind of guy you would go for at that age would again differ in my opinion. So mm-hmm. I do feel like it differs throughout your life in terms yeah. of what you're looking for yeah. in a man. 100%. I completely agree. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting example that you use. So now let's talk about what if you think, what if the man's earning just 1K more than you? <laughs> in fact, you know what? Let's talk about what if he's earning 500 pounds more than you? 
because the tax bracket thing is a real is a really interesting thing. Oh no, thing. this is a real serious topic because because, yeah. because, yeah. because yeah. again, the man could be earning more than you, yeah, and it's one thousand pounds, but or it's five hundred pounds, yeah, but that doesn't give that doesn't necessarily it mean equate to much more in a month. Yeah, exactly. your monthly take home. And that's why I say the tax bracket thing is a thing because just because I'm earning more than you, sometimes the difference might be 300 pounds. Yeah. That's food doesn't... shopping. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? That's food shopping yeah. for some people. That's a t-shirt for some people. Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting. I don't know. I think, yeah, I don't think it automatically equals disrespect. No. But I definitely think there's so many areas and other aspects. For me as a person, yeah. I think it's the, the surrounding areas that I look at. Yeah. Because your earning potential could be way more than mine, depending on, depending on what job you do. So, for example, yeah. I work in tech, right? Mm -hmm. And if my partner works in tech, for example, mm -hmm. let's say he's a programmer, his earning potential is a lot higher than yeah. mine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you might be earning less than me now. Mm -hmm. But if I'm seeing you actually getting up in the morning, mm -hmm. grinding, putting in work, doing these things, building consistent habits you're disciplined you're gonna get there at some point and you're gonna be earning more than me so i'm not yeah. gonna be, i don't feel the need to disrespect you no of course. if i'm waking up in the morning like i told you if i'm getting leaving my house every morning <laughs> getting ready for work yeah. you haven't done any you're not doing anything in your day i'm the disrespect is gonna come some from somewhere yeah. because i'm gonna end up resenting you because i feel like i'm doing all the work i'm doing my job as a woman and your job as a man yeah 100%. that's the thing it can be quite difficult i think if you're, especially when you're looking at the dynamics where a woman is doing everything yeah, and she's carrying everything. So yeah. whether it be, you know, she's having to get up early and having to, um, you know, look after the kids, take the kids to school, go to work, which for most women is a normal, you know, is an, it's a normal day. Yeah. Um, and then she's bringing in the most amount of money, like, no, that is not okay for me. Like no, for me personally, work. like don't get don't get twisted. Like I would be like, "Hello, you need to step it up. You need to bring something to the table." And it may not necessarily be financial, but it would be, you know, maybe you're taking the kids to school every day, or maybe you're the one that's cooking dinner every day yeah. because you can't expect me to take over from your roles and responsibilities. Exactly. And then you're not compensating in other ways. Absolutely. For me, it has to, it's definitely a partnership. And I'm not necessarily yeah. saying that you have to be the person that's making all the money or you've no. got to be the person, you know, but it, it, there's got to be a partnership in it. There's got to be a bit of give and take. If you're, if I'm working, I mean, we're going, if we're looking back to like pre 1960s where, you know, women weren't working as much or, or, you know, and, and to be fair, there's still an issue with pay gap. We're there looking is. at the gender pay gap there in is. modern day society. There's still an issue. This is still a hot topic, guys. Yeah. So it is quite important to, um, like for me, it makes probably more logical sense for the man to be, you know, the higher earner. Be just for the mere fact that, you know, if I'm having to, if I'm in a in a time where I'm breeding children, yeah, you know, I'll be going on mat leave. So instantly, I'm written off for at least like almost twelve months instantly. of pay. You know, I'm reduced to the government pay or, you know, if the, if, um, what's that thing that they give you? Maternity, maternity, maternity pay. pay. Yeah. You know, which may not be enough. And if we've got a mortgage that, um, needs to be covered, mm -hmm. well, we either be mortgage or rent anyway, but if we need to pay for it, we, you know, now we don't have my income. How does that work? How does that help the household, you know, and that then becomes an issue and that then becomes a struggle. And then I have to worry about going back to work quicker and I can't nurture the child. And I think those are some of the things that sometimes we overlook when we, you know, are happy for the man to earn a bit more. So I think, you know, those are some of the things that you definitely need to speak to with your partner. You have to make sure you're living within your means. If the woman is a higher, um, higher earner, yeah could you still afford to look after the household if she was having children? Because yeah. the next question would be, you know, okay, so are you, when are we going to have kids? When are we going to start having children? Yeah. And if I say, well, I can't really think about this because I'm the higher earner here. So how would we, how would we cope in the event that mm -hmm. we were um, about to have children? You know, it becomes, it becomes a stressful topic and it becomes stress in the household. Yeah. Ultimately, yes, you'd have to think light years ahead and start thinking about saving, which you should be doing anyway. But it's just the unnecessary stresses of it. And so I think based on how society operates and based on the on how our bodies are mm -hmm. as, you know, as people, because, you know, I can't pick and choose for my partner to carry a child. No. I can't pick for him to carry a child. So no. it doesn't even 
it's not it's not an even trade off to begin with. So even if your partner is earning less than you, so long as it can still balance the house, I think you know I would still respect you. But ultimately, if it can't, if we can't balance the house and we have to delay things like having children and all those things, then that's when it. Bec- I feel like it starts to become a problem and it starts to become a bit of a and that's why fear aspect. Yeah. But it's not. It's not. I don't think it is a very clean answer of, no, if I earn more than you, I'm going to disrespect you because yeah. that I don't believe that's the case. But I think there are some areas where, you know, you need to kind of have those honest conversations with your partner and open conversations and discuss about how that may impact your household. Yep. And that's why I say just because a woman earns more doesn't automatically equal disrespect. Because like mm-hmm. you said, these conversations are conversations that need to be had yeah. in your relationship so you know where you're going. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, I don't, Again, I don't think it automatically equals disrespect. No. Something I wanted to say, but it definitely escapes my mind. Mm. <laughs> I wonder if it's the wine. <laughs> <laughs> probably um, is. It probably is. It'll come back to me at some point. Mm. Um, what was it? Maternity wise, mm-hmm. right? So do you think if you, let's say you have, like, obviously, let's say your mat leave was 12 months. And in those 12 months, for example, your husband is like, you know what? Within those 12 months, you, you I don't want you to have to go back to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he says, okay, I'm going to, you know, try to get a new job. I'm going to do this. If you see him actively trying to get this new job so he can um, earn more money, how would you feel? Would you be comfortable enough to give him, to trust him as a man to go out and make sure that happens while you're on maternity leave? I think it, de- it depends massively on the guy you're dating. Okay. Um, you see what I'm saying about the habits, mm. the consistency and things like that? Because if your man, for example, was one of those guys that was a talker mm. and nothing ever got done, mm. that's where the disrespect comes in. Mm. If I can relax in my energy and my man said to me, he's going to get this done. I trust you enough to get that done. Mm. Do you see what I mean? And I, those are the things that I think are the difference. I think we keep saying, you know, yes, um, Love is not love is just not enough because at the end of the day, when the life situation is kicking like maternity, yeah. we're gonna be fighting. Yeah. We're gonna be mm. arguing about these things. And naturally they say that a woman wants to you you wanna be looked after. Mm. That is our innate, you know, and the same way the men wants to look after you, that's why the ego thing we were talking about mm. earlier comes in. So it's a it's a really it's a rough argument. <laughs> it's a rough debate, it's a rough mix off. <laughs> It is. There's just so much to cover on this kind of topic because you can also talk about, you know, like when you talk, when you look at women from the 1960s versus yeah. the women of the 2020s. Yeah. You know, how different are they? You know, very. They're they're almost like on the opposite ends, and it probably will continue to grow like that. Yeah. Um. Because obviously, um, there was so much change for women in the 1960s versus mm-hmm. where we where we're at now. Yeah. And so we're seeing so much more women going into work, so much more women, you know, making a change in 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 careers and trying to progress and going after the things they love and, mm-hmm. you know, breaking down barriers, breaking down, you know, um, world record, like not world record, but, you know, world change on certain things. I mean, like, I don't know if you've been, if you watched the World Cup, but then during the World Cup, they had um, three, there was, I can't remember what game it was. Oh, but <laughs> I was, definitely don't watch that. <laughs> see, I love football, but um, there was I definitely do not. There was <laughs> there was um a, a match where they had a free women referee. Like there was, it was okay. just all women referees. Love that though. And you know, and even the pundits, like you know, the people who are speaking over the games and stuff like that, we were seeing more women doing it. You know, that. so it's it's such a change. Like these are things that had never happened before mm-hmm. that are now coming into play. Like over the last um few years, and you know, it it will continue to grow like that. It will, will we will continue to see more women working. We will continue to see more women striving for you know change in certain industries. I think what we would also love to see um is you know more women at senior level management as well. Yeah, because you know when you're looking at the percentages of women in top, you know, CEO level in companies. And I'm not talking companies that you own yourself. I'm talking about, you know, established companies. There's not that many in comparison yeah. to men. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the question is, are a lot of those women having to sacrifice things? Like, are they sacrificing the things like family because of it? Yeah, the, the answer to that question 
I believe is, yeah. yeah. You, unfortunately, there's a lot of sacrifices you have to make as a woman to mm -hmm. be at that top level most of the time. Not always, yeah. just most of the time. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's, it's tough. And again, they say, for example, the higher you earn as a woman, yeah. the lower your, the, the smaller your percentage of men to choose from is. Because as we were mm. saying, most women want a man that earns more than them. Yeah. But when you're top earning like that, what is the what's the average of men that are earning mm -hmm. in, in you. parallel to you? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, it's a it's a tough call. Okay. And then I feel like as you get older as a woman, your priorities might change. Mm. So are you then happy? Yeah. When you're, for example, the CEO of this company, but then you don't have a husband, you don't have no kids, you just have money. Yeah. With who to spend it with? So a question for you then is <laughs> <laughs> Why for me? <laughs> I'll answer it too. But okay. I'm curious to know, do you feel that you can have, be an amazing mother and wife? Yeah. And be great at, you know, and pro progressing your career massively? Yeah. Or do you feel like it has to be one or the other? Do you feel like you have to, you know, do you feel like one will have to be sacrificed in order to do well in the other? There's always a trade-off in life. Mm. Always. Mm -hmm. And every action is a consequence. Yeah. I think you can have it all. Yeah. But all to what extent? Yeah. Do you see what I mean? So I think you can be a great mother mm -hmm. and I think you could be a great wife to your husband and I think you could be great at your job. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean mm. just because I'm great at my job means I'm the CEO of that particular job. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And for me personally, if my man, for example, and I was comfortable enough with my husband, I would be willing to sacrifice being great at my career, mm. but not necessarily being the CEO of that company. Mm -hmm. If you know me personally, you know I'm a very ambitious person. Yeah. But I think there's an element of, I need to do this for me because mm -hmm. I need to make sure. Again, I don't know whether this comes from childhood. I don't know whether this comes from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's elements of me, I'm like, I want to get there. I want to do really, really well for myself. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like even now as I'm getting older, mm -hmm. my the way I'm seeing things are very different yeah. to how I saw things back then. When I was younger, I wanted to be this. I wanted to be that. I wanted to be this. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like... You know what? I love my job. I'm good. I'm very good at my job. You yeah. know what I mean? I respect the people. I respect some of the people that are above me yeah. in my current role. Do you see what I mean? My manager's great. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's a position I could I could be in and I could still be a great mother, mm. a great wife. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm not okay. really, I, there's things I won't have to trade off. Yeah. But I do think there are certain things that you have to trade off at, just as a woman. You just have to. Because... Mm. Being a great mother requires a lot of time. It does. And being great and being a CEO. A, but again, counter to what I've just said, I might, maybe I might be taking that back a little bit. <laughs> because again, you can hire people, if you're a CEO, for example, mm. to help you be better. Yeah. So I don't know. Definitely. What do you think? It's quite an interesting one. And the way you kind of like pulled it back in last minute kind of makes sense because ultimately you can delegate. Yes. There is such thing as delegate. And mm -hmm. I feel like too many times people do feel bad for having to, you know, put people in positions to help them achieve things in a better way. So, they do. for example. I definitely don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't know. But yeah. <laughs> like, for example, cleaning the house takes ages. Yeah. I'm not saying my house is dirty because it's not, guys. It's definitely <laughs> not. But it does take time. And yeah. I can imagine if I wanted to focus more on my business mm -hmm. or you know, on my career, on my family, there would be certain things that I would delegate. And yeah. cleaning is one of them. I have a cleaner now. I would I would literally delegate like, to a cleaner. Yeah. You know, like you can you can hire people in positions, whether it be work, whether it be in personal life, to help you and enable you to do the things that you want to put more time into. Yeah. So like I said, hiring a cleaner is one. Yeah. You could, you know, um have people in position in work like administrators or things mm -hmm. like that that could help and if even if you can't afford those then maybe it's something like you know with admin there are lots of different ways now where you can do like you could just do things to manage your time better use different yeah. apps to be able to help control things or you know things like Hootsuite that can kind of like program you know you can set in like programming and timing so things kind of go out automated automated yeah. thank you so you know, there are ways that you can try to manage and help your life so that it's not so all on you and utilize certain technologies and different ways to, or yeah, outsource. It's I'm just, 
I agree. I'm a, I'm a big believer in everything you've just said because yeah. I have a cleaner now. I have a yeah. gardener because there's certain things that I think I'm just not good at. No. So for example, we talk a lot, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm really bad at design. <laughs> I'm really bad at like um, interior design, things like yeah. that. I know my strengths and yeah. I know my weaknesses. Yeah, I'm not going to spend 55 hours trying to create something. Why? No. When somebody else can do it in 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I mean? So that's what I said. I think maybe... It's about finding the balance because it's about finding yeah. things that we can do for ourselves mm-hmm. that are great, but it's also knowing when to delegate and when to give out. Yeah. Um, I read a book recently and my manager actually bought me, my managers actually, two of them, um, got me this course to do. And it's a great course. And mm-hmm. basically we're saying that if a problem is taking you more than 15 minutes to do, you need to find help. <laughs> you need to find help. That's interesting. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So wheeling it back all in to like mm. the family, the household, automatic. If we're in a household together, mm. we, for example, you're a busy man, I'm a busy woman. We're getting a cleaner. Mm. Because we, but then again, that depends on, can we afford it? Yeah. And this is what I'm saying. Finance is actually a very big aspect of all relationships. Yeah. So yes, no, it doesn't automatically equal disrespect. The surrounding figures yeah. will cause, can cause resentment. Because I do feel like even if the man felt that the woman wasn't pulling her weight, mm-hmm. that's resentment on the other side. Yeah. And that's still that's that in itself is one thing. But men don't really care what their what their woman does. Because again, <laughs> most of the time, women are takers and men are givers. givers yeah. Do you see what I mean? So it it let's scale it up and let's weigh it all up. Mm. Then they know that most of the time they're the providers. We know most of the time that we're the receivers. We have a different role to they the, to mm. them. So if they're not fulfilling their role, eventually the surrounding aspects are gonna cause disrespect because things are different. Yeah. You see what I mean? Vice versa, if we wasn't doing our role as a woman, that's going to cause resentment and it's going to cause disrespect. Yeah. Especially if he's providing and doing all the, bringing in what he says he's going to be doing or Mm. doing what he said he's going to be doing. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Mm. Ladies, (laughs) let us know what you think because we want to know, do you, if you're in current relationships, have you had mm-hmm. any of these issues come up? Yeah. Um, do you feel like it automatically equals disrespect? Do you agree that it's the surrounding factors that cause disrespect? Um, men, what do you think? Because yeah. again, we're interested to know. I feel like if we had a man talking right now, the, this could be a completely, completely different, different conversation. conversation. Yeah, no, could absolutely. Be a com- yeah. I totally agree. I think it'd be quite interesting to get perspective on both men, like from men, but also from you ladies. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know your opinions. You know, do you think it automatically dis- um, equals disrespect just like yeah. Jimmy said or do you think no it's fine I earn a lot more than my husband and it works perfectly fine for yeah. our household let us know give us your you know your feedback and your thoughts on this topic yeah because we think it doesn't automatically equal disrespect no we don't but the surrounding factors can, can cause disrespect impact. yeah so we'll wait to hear from you yeah amazing <laughs>